Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning in today. Hey, here's what I know about all of us. We're all chasing something in life. We're all longing for something, searching for something. We're all hoping that we will arrive somewhere in life at some point. And that, that is what our current worship series is all about. The series is called, Are We There Yet? And today, I'm gonna ask you a simple question, and that question is this. Whose approval are you chasing? Whose approval are you chasing? And whose approval really matters? If you stick around to the end of my message, you're gonna find out that our faith, our faith has a whole lot, a whole lot to say about all of this. Hey, if you're brand new to Calvary, here's what I want to do. I want to invite you to join us in just a couple of weeks. If you're here in the Alexandria area, would you join us for in-person worship? We are finally regathering for in-person worship on Sundays beginning Memorial Day weekend. We're going to worship at 8 o'clock right here in the sanctuary with a traditional liturgical service. And then we'll worship at 10 o'clock out at Luther Crest Bible Camp for our modern Calvary at the Lake service. If you come early at 9 o'clock, we'll serve you brunch. Folks, I can't wait to worship with you. How much longer, Mom? Yeah. Guys, we'll just get there in a second. Just five more minutes. You said that 10 minutes ago. I mean, we get there when we get there. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? It's a question we're all asking. When will COVID and all the unrest in our world, the political divide, masking and restrictions all be a thing of the past? It's no surprise, are we there yet, is a question we find ourselves asking because it's a question that rests on all of our hearts. Most of us, most days, busy ourselves chasing, well, chasing things we believe will bring us contentment. But what if the contentment we seek is only found in something God gives? Are we there? This week we celebrated my dad's 75th birthday and any time in our family when we celebrate a big event like that we have this tendency to look back. We look at pictures from the past and I want to share a few of the pictures that we came across as we were looking back over my dad's life and one of those pictures is this one. This is a doozy. Look at cute little haunts here but more than that I want you to take a look at my dad. I obviously got my sense of fashion from my dad. Check out those big old polarized glasses. Take a look at his ratty bell bottoms and then down on his feet. I wish you could see it. He's got sandals with black socks on. I certainly I must have got my sense of fashion from my dad because a couple years later when my mother took me took me to JC Penney. This is the picture we got. Look at the bowl cut but more importantly just like my dad I have my sandals on with this time white white socks well we found also some other pictures of me a few years later we found this one a school picture still got big old glasses wanted to be like my dad but I want you to notice the shirts here this blue shirt is a polo my mom got me just for my school picture that year but I, I wanted to go a little bit in my own direction with my fashion. So as we left home, as, as my mom dropped me off at school, I pulled out of my backpack this white shirt and put it on over. That was my favorite shirt. It was an Ocean Pacific shirt that I just had to wear on picture day. Well, as I would grow up, I would, I would gain my own sense of fashion. Check this middle school picture out. Oh yeah, Hans Dahl rocking the perm in middle school. And then we've got this picture, my senior picture. Look out, Tom Cruise. There I am in a silk shirt, stonewashed jeans. Uh, I love these pictures uh, because they, well, they remind me of something. You see, it's clear from pictures like this that when we are little, when we are really little, we could care less. We could care less what other people think of what we look, look like. Because we're not looking for approval 
from other people. Am I right? The only approval that matters when you're a little kid is the approval, the approval of your parents. You don't look to anybody else for approval except your parents. It's your parents' approval that brings you security. It brings you confidence. I mean, moms, this is why when your kids run out of the house wearing things, you're mortified that they're wearing things that don't match, things that look ridiculous. This is why, because the only approval that matters to kids is your approval. But here's the thing about approval. As we get older, as we get older slowly but surely, we start chasing approval in the approval of others. We start looking for, for the approval of others, slowly but surely, slowly but surely. It matters what our friends think of us. It matters what that girl thinks of us, what that boy thinks of us. It matters, it matters that we get the approval of the people, well, people beyond us. And here's the thing, I want to talk specifically today about approval and how we are all chasing approval because here's what I think it's not just a kid thing I don't think it's just a kid thing I think all of us have this little voice in our heads that's saying do they like me do the people around me do they approve of me <laughs> I mean I think all of us who are homeowners wonder what do the neighbors think of my lawn uh, we all have friends friends we wonder do they like me am I good enough for them uh, is that friend, am I a good enough golfer that I can golf with that friend's friends? Am I classy enough to go to that friend's book club? At work, do, do my coworkers approve of my, of my work? You see, here's what I believe with all my heart. We're all chasing the approval of someone. And do you know why I know this? Because Facebook has made billions of dollars over our pursuit of approval. Every last one of us is looking for one more of these things, right? We all want to know that we, that we are liked. We're all chasing the approval of someone. There's a great author by the name of Harriet Breaker, and she wrote a book called The Disease to Please. And in that book, she writes, she writes all about how, how our desire, our people-pleasing nature, our desire for other people's approval is like a disease. It's like an addiction. Just like drug addicts seek drugs, people-pleasers seek approval. Just like there are drug addicts, there are approval addicts. Because too often when we're chasing the approval of others, we are willing to do anything, to say anything, to become anything in order to gain the approval of others. It's this disease to please. I don't know about you, but, but likely in your family, if not you yourself, there are some people pleasers. And, and there are three characteristics, three struggles that all people pleasers struggle with. And the first is this. People pleasers are obsessed about what other people think. They're obsessed about what other people think. They wonder, do they like my outfit? Do the people around me uh, like my politics? Do they like what I shared on social media? You see, people pleasers wonder when you text somebody, why didn't they text me back? I saw the little bubbles come up, but they didn't send a message. When, invite, when you invite someone else to a party and they, they decline the invitation, you wonder, well, why is it? Do they, do they like me? I'll admit, I struggle with this from time to time. And the time I struggle with this the most is actually right after I'm done giving a message. As soon as I'm done, I wonder, what do they think? What will they think of that message? I go to my wife like a little puppy dog. What did you think? What did you think? What do you think? You see, people pleasers, people pleasers are obsessed. They obsess about what other people think. The second thing that people pleasers do is this. They are overly sensitive to criticism. I think all of us have experienced this. We might get a hundred compliments. Compliments on an outfit, on a, on a new haircut, on, on the way your house looks, on the work you did, on that project at work. But you get one comment, you get one criticism, you get one backhanded statement, or the boss says, hey, next time, why don't you try it this way? And man, it can crush us. If one criticism has the ability to cause you to fall apart, it's likely you are a people pleaser. 
And there's one more struggle that, that people pleasers have, and it's this. They have a hard time saying no. Often people pleasers are overcommitted because regardless of how overworked they are, overwhelmed, overloaded, they have a hard time saying no when the boss says, can you get this one more thing done? When a family member says, can you do this one thing for us? When a friend asks for that one more favor, people pleasers struggle to say, to say no. I mean, this is why often people date people that everyone else goes, why are you dating that person? They are, that, that guy's a drip. It's because we often have a hard time saying no of hurting people's feelings. Oh, that's, why, that's why people pleasers often avoid, avoid conflict. Because in conflict, you might actually have to stand up for what you believe. You might have to say no. You see, we're all, we're all busy chasing the approval of someone. You might wonder, why is the church, are we taking the time to talk about this business of chasing approval, of being people pleasers, all of that? Well, if you consider yourself a Christian, here's why it matters. It matters a lot. You see, when you're obsessed with, with what other people think of you, you'll never hear what God thinks of you. It's the truth. When you are obsessed with what other people think of you, you will never hear what God, what God thinks of you. There's a book of the Bible that's called Proverbs. And in Proverbs, there are all these wise sayings. And there's one wise saying that we're going to take a look at today because it has everything to do with our obsession with the approval of people around us. In Proverbs chapter 9, we see these words. It says, The fear of man will prove to be a snare. The fear of man, the fear we have of not getting the approval of the people around us. The fear of man will prove to be a snare. Now, what is a snare? Well, a snare in that ancient world was like a hook. And sometimes it was referred to as a, as a hook that you'd use to grab animals. But other times it was a hook. A hook. This is just, it's hard for me to do this and hard for you to watch. A hook that went through the nose of an animal. I mean, maybe you've seen it. Here's a, here's a cow with a hook in its nose. When Paul writes these words, he talks about, see that passage again, the fear of man will prove to be a snare. Our fear of gaining the approval of the people around us will be like a hook in our nose. And that fear of not getting approval will pull us around in life. The fear of man will prove to be a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord, whoever trusts what God thinks of you, the love God has for you, the belief God has in you, well, whoever trusts in the Lord's view of you will, well, will be kept, will be kept safe. Now, here's the thing. I think that's easier. It's easier said than done. Because I think all of us need to be reminded again and again, almost on a daily basis, of what God, of what God thinks of us. And that, that we don't need anybody else's, anybody else's approval but God. And there's an author by the name of Paul who wrote much of the New Testament who seems to be writing in order to remind himself that, that all he needs, all that matters is God's approval. He writes these words. He writes, obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. I'm if pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. He starts out obviously. Now, if you know who Paul is in the Bible, Paul was persecuted. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. He was thrown in prison because of his faith. All of that because of his faith. To those of us on the outside, we would say, obviously, obviously, Paul was clear that the only thing that mattered in his life was God's approval, approval of him. But unfortunately for us, I don't believe it's all that, all that obvious. It's clearly not as obvious as it was to Paul that the only approval that matters is God's approval. And here's why. Every day we tell ourselves lies about the approval we need. 
Lies that suggest whose approval we need. Lies that suggest what that approval should look like or what we should need to do to gain the approval of the people of the people around us. We say, yeah, 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 I understand, Pastor, that, that God approves of me, God is pleased with me, but what I really need right now is the appro approval of my friends, the approval of that team, the approval of my team at work. That's what I actually, I actually need right now. And it sends us chasing, on this endless chasing of approval. It only makes it harder that some of us grew up in homes where we didn't get the approval of our parents growing up. In the homes we grew up in, there are far too few I'm proud of yous, far too few I'm thankful for yous, there are far too few I love yous. And so we've lived our entire lives chasing approval. Now here's the thing, uh, as a pastor, being a pastor and, and being a part of a ministry in a church, well, it's interesting. For a people pleaser, a church can be a dangerous place. And for pastors who are people pleasers, it's just that. Because pastors can often find themselves, they can find themselves saying things that, that make this group of people really happy over here. And then, and then they go to this group of people and they make this group of people happy over here. And then they do things that this group of people are happy with. And then they do what this group of people are happy with. And before you know it, pastors so often become chameleons. Just doing and being and saying what everybody wants them to say, do, and be. Rather than or rather than being who God calls them to be, rather than saying what God is calling them to say, rather than leading the church in directions that God, God is inviting them to lead the church. It's interesting, Paul writes again to another church that he started in Thessalonica. And he writes these words. He writes, On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, we are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. He goes on, we were not looking for praise from people, not from you or anyone else. Instead, you were like young children among you. Let me read that again. You were like young children among you. You see, here's what I wonder. I wonder when it comes to our pursuit of approval, all the ways we chase the approval of people around us, I wonder if God invites us to be like children again. Remember those pictures at the beginning of the message? You and I know this. We could care less about what we look like when we are kids. Why? Because the approval of people around us, it doesn't matter. Whose approval matters? The only approval for a child is the approval of their parent. And folks, here's what you need to know. You have a heavenly father who approves of you, who always will approve of you. A God who is pleased with you, whatever your life looks like, wherever you go in this life, whatever you do, whatever you don't do, this God approves of you. Your heavenly father always will. If you're not sure what God thinks of you, it's absolutely clear in the Bible. Again and again, it reminds us of what God thinks of you. You are, the Bible says, a new creation. You are forgiven. Paul says, you are more than a conqueror in Christ. We hear in the Psalms, God's masterpiece, that's who you are. John writes, you are the light of the world. We hear, uh, you are the righteousness of God. And again and again, Paul writes, you are greatly loved by God, whoever you are and whatever your life might look like. Friends, we are all chasing the approval of someone. But what if, what if the only approval that really mattered was God's? And that you were to know without, without doubt that you, you have a God who approves of you. What, what would that do to your life? Just maybe it might change you. Maybe you might not avoid conflict, but rather step into that conflict. 
Maybe you might feel a whole lot more comfortable. You might not be afraid of driving that junky car you have around town because it doesn't matter what other people think of you. Just maybe you won't be afraid to stand up rather than going with the flow. Maybe you'll be a whole lot more bold in being willing to speak out. Maybe you'll challenge the status quo in your family or at work or among your friend group. Because the only one whose approval matters to you is that of God's, and God always approves of you. You see, here's the thing we know as people of faith. You are not what they think of you. You are what God thinks of you. You're not what all those around you think of you. You are only what God, what God thinks of you. Now, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but regardless of how hard you try, you will never please all the people around you, people pleasers. Trust me, I've tried. And here's the other thing you need to know. When we seek approval from those around us, it'll never be enough. The approval you're seeking will never be enough if we're seeking approval in those around us. But here's what I know with all my heart. You have a heavenly Father who approves of you, who looks down on you and is so pleased with you. This God approves of you, always had and always will. Will. As we close today, I've got a couple of questions for you. First, if you're gathered with your family, friends, your connect group, whose approval are you chasing? Be honest, we're all chasing the approval of someone. And secondly, when have you compromised who you are to gain someone's approval? When have you compromised your own values, your own sense of being in order to gain someone's approval? And lastly, how about this? How does knowing you have God's unconditional approval change how you live? Let me offer up a prayer for you. Good and gracious God, you know that every one of us, we're seeking the approval of someone. Many of us grew up in homes where there were far too few I'm proud of you's. I'm thankful for yous. I love yous. And so God, it sent us spinning, searching for approval in everyone and anything. But God, remind us that the only approval that really matters, the only approval that will ever fill that void inside us is the approval you have for us, your unwavering, unconditional approval for which we give thanks. Thanks be to God. Amen.
has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. No matter where you're at, what your life looks like, know that we have a God who loves you so much. Please pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for worship. Here at Calvary, we have been busy focusing in on our mission, which is to lead all people to a lifelong faith in Jesus Christ. And I'm excited to tell you about some ways that you can continue to grow in your own faith. I want to remind you that first of all, we are opening up for in-person worship starting Memorial Day weekend. On May 30th, we're going to start with an 8 o'clock traditional liturgical worship service in our sanctuary right here at the church. And at 10 o'clock, we're going to be over on the shores of Lake Carlos at Calvary at the Lake. And here's Katie to tell you all about it. Hey everybody, it's almost summer and that means it's time for Calvary at the Lake. We cannot wait to welcome you back to this unique outdoor worship experience on the beautiful shores of Lake Carlos at Luther Crest Bible Camp. Let's head out there and I'll show you a little bit of what you can expect. Luther Crest Bible Camp has been our gracious host for this outdoor service since 2012. When you arrive on a Sunday, just follow the signs and you'll be greeted by Calvary volunteers in the parking lot. Beginning at 9 a.m., you're invited to brunch in Luther Crest's dining hall. Leave a free will donation and you can have a variety of both hot and cold food items to fill you up. The mini donuts are a hit every single year. Worship begins at 10 a.m. down by the lakeshore, so grab your coffee and walk down the path toward the lake. If you or anyone with you doesn't feel steady on the path, don't worry, we'll have golf carts and friendly drivers ready to safely drive you down the hill. And if you live on Lake Carlos or the Chain of Lakes, you can even take your boat to church. Luther Crest has boat slips right along the shore near the worship area. One of the wonderful things about an outdoor worship service is the amount of space we have. We'll set up folding camping chairs and benches on this flat, grassy area, or you can bring your own chairs if you feel more comfortable or even a blanket to sit up the hill anywhere. New this year, you don't even have to pick up a booklet. We've got a huge screen on the stage for all the announcements and song lyrics. We are so excited to worship with you this summer at Calvary at the Lake. And we'd love for you to think about who you could invite to worship with you. The casual worship environment is a great reason to invite a friend or a neighbor to worship and brunch with you. And be sure to swing by church this week to pick up your yard sign. That's a great way to let others know that they're invited to Calvary at the Lake. If you have had the great opportunity to worship with other people and you would like to enjoy communion together, the Lord's Supper together, you can go to our website at www.calvaryalex.org and click on the button that says communion. There are resources there for you to be able to do communion in your home and a full traditional communion liturgy there for you to be able to enjoy. Also, there on that same website, www.calvaryalex.org, there is a discussion guide which will help you dig deeper into all the things that Pastor Hans talked about today. I encourage you to go there and dig deeper into the message today. And now as we close our time together, we're going to close with a time of offering. And there are four ways that you can do this, and they're on your screen. The first is you can go to that same website, www.calvaryalex.org, click on the button that says Give. The second is that you can text Calvary Alex to 77977 and follow the prompts that come on your phone. The third is that you can write a check and mail it to the church at 605 Douglas Street, Alexandria, Minnesota 56308. And the fourth is that you can call the church office with the number on your screen and we will help you figure it all out. Hey, have a great day, everyone.